here are the tiers. Want to build? Very fun. Fun. Kind of fun. Not fun. All right, let's kick things off with Achilles Davenport. It's a four mana, three, three human assassin with free running for a blue and a red. So when I say free running, you can cast this spell for its free running cost. If you've dealt damage to a player this turn with an assassin or commander, combat damage specifically. So it's menace and other assassins you control get plus one, plus one. This is, seems like a kind of fun commander. Seems like an assassin kindred payoff. Probably the great in the 99 of a lot of these commanders, but as its own commander, I'm not that into it. Next up is Aidwall Breaker of Chains. Three mana, four, one human assassin pirate. When they enter the battlefield, view the top six cards of your library, put an assassin, pirate, or vehicle card from among them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Whenever a vehicle you control deals combat damage to a player, you may return them from your graveyard to your hand, or this card from your graveyard to your hand. Again, I think this is going to be great in the 99, but I think this is still more fun than like just a lord that we had before. Next up is Alexos, Demos of Cosmos. Nailed it. It's a legendary, it's a human berserker with trample. Whenever they attack, e they attack each combat if able, can't be sacrificed, and can attack its owners. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player gains control of this creature, untaps it, and puts a plus one plus one counter on it. It gains haste until end of turn. Yeah, that seems kind of fun. I'm going to put that in the, f not kind of fun, that seems fun. I'm going to put that in the fun category. Kind of reminds me of one of the Warhammer commanders. Next up is Altair Ibn La Ahad. No. Listen, these are all perfect. It's a three mana, three, three human assassin with first strike. Whenever they attack, exile up to one target assassin creature card from your graveyard with a memory counter on it. Then for each creature card you own in exile with a memory counter on it, create a tap and attacking token that's a copy of it exile those tokens at the end of combat so you have to exile your own assassins and then you get counters on them and then you get them back and there are ways to like if you double up on tokens but they're they don't say they're not legendary so it doesn't really work if they're like a lot of legendary assassins but there are ways like what's the card sundial the infinite right where you can end your turn and remove this like exile from the stack i believe so that's sundial of infinite assassin seems cool so we'll put it up in the fun tier Next up is our Boz Mir, two mana, two, two, human assassin. Whenever it or another non-token historic permanent enters the battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Seems solid. Seems actually really good in PDH. Uh, it's an uncommon commander that's like an impact tremors in the command zone. And even a regular commander, you artifact, Boros artifact storm, and you gain life, which is really cool. And this is dealing damage. So if you can give it infect, it actually can infect out the table. I'm gonna put that in fun. I'm gonna put that like up here, I think. I think it's a tail end of fun, actually. Next up is Arno Dorian, four mana, three, three, another human assassin, death touch. Other assassins you control get plus two, plus so. And it has disguise for a black and a red, black and a red. You may cast this face down as for three mana as a two, two with ward two, then turn it face up for its disguise cost at any point. It's another lord it has disguise, but I'm not that interested in this as a commander. Next up is Avaline de Grand Prix, four mana, three, three, human assassin, death touch. Whenever a creature you control with death touch deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus one plus one counters on that creature. And this is just, this has disguise for a black and a green. It's a Golgari commander. It's a death touch, but it's not like the infect death touch commander from Kaldheim. This seems actually pretty fun because you can put a Hapatra in here or death touch snakes, a bunch of like weenies that people don't want to block. And they just keep getting bigger and bigger as the game goes on. Next up is Aya of Alexandria, four mana, four, three, menace lifelink. Whenever his, a historic creature you control deals damage, combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one, one black assassin creature token with menace. That seems cool. A historic creature, so it's an artifact or a legendary creature, so you can do Boros Legends, Boros Artifacts again. You get an assassin token. I'm gonna put that up to very fun. I like that it's combat damage too, so you can't just like incidentally go infinite with this, because I guess you'd go infinite with one of the commanders we just talked about where, oh no, it's a historic creature to make a 1-1 one, one assassin. Ignore me. But yeah, I like this card. Next up is Boss Sim Imd in Shock. Two mana, two, two, human assassin. Whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card. They can't be blocked this turn. This ability only triggers once each turn. Whenever they deal, whenever they deal combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Seems solid. It's card draw in Demir. I'm gonna put it at the tail end of fun, but it seems great. Next up is Bake of Siwa. Five mana, three, four, human assassin, double strike. As long as it's your turn, other historic creatures you control double strike, and it has disguise for one a black, one a red and a white. So okay, so it's another again, another historic matters kind of card. 
probably great in the 99. I don't know how fun I think this is. It is cool you can disguise them. I love that disguiser on these because you can do some attacks and then flip this up. And then just out of nowhere, all your historic creatures have double strike and you could like knock someone out of the game. So that's really good in the 99. But you can also cast this, I think, from your command zone face down. Because it doesn't say um, from your hand. I don't think you have to disguise from your hand. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments section. Next up is Cleopatra Exiled Pharaoh. Or mana 2-4 Human Noble. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target legendary creatures. And whenever a legendary creature with counters on it dies, draw a card and for each counter on it and you lose two life. Oh, they could just say whenever it dies, you draw a card, but it's for each counter on it. This seems really good. I like Golgari. I want to build this. Yeah, no, it seems solid. Next up is Desmond Miles, two mana, one, three human assassin with menace. They get plus one plus oh for each other assassin you control and each assassin card in your graveyard. And whenever they deal combat damage to a player, surveil X, where X the amount of damage it dealt to that player. So if you want to play like a mono black mill assassin or mono black assassin, this seems pretty good. Surveil is great. It's a 1-3 with Menace. It does get pretty big, but I think I like it in the 99 more because people will be less scared of the commander damage. But I'm going to put this in kind of fun. This one isn't quite doing it for me as its own commander. Next up is Edward uh, Kenway, 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, a human assassin pirate. At the beginning of your end step, create a treasure for each tapped assassin, pirate, and or vehicle you control. That seems really good, right? Because if you have vehicles, you can just crew them with your all your creatures, and then you can crew vehicles with other vehicles. So you can just kind of keep doing that and all your stuff will be tapped. Whenever a vehicle you control deals combat damage to a player, look at the top card of that player's library, then exile it face down. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. So this cares about vehicles like just smashing in face. And it's so if you give your vehicles double strike, that seems really good. This seems very fun. This seems like a strong vehicle commander. That's like you get to steal people's cards, which I always love doing. You get treasures for just having tapped vehicles and assassins and pirates. And I like that you can do pirates and assassins in here. That's really good. There are some vehicles, like there's an energy one from MH3 that just taps, like give you an energy. So you can just like kind of keep tapping that to like make treasures. Yeah, I like this card. Next up is Eivor Battle Ready. Five mana, five, five, human assassin warrior. Vigilance Haste. Whenever it attacks, it deals damage equal to the number of equipment you control to each opponent. This seems very fun. I might throw this up to want to build. This is really funny with like Bloodforge Battle Axe or ways of making token copies of equipment. What you can do in Boros. It's a little bit harder, but it's fine. I think this is great. Vigilance and Haste on a Voltron Commander is solid. And it's not even each equipment attached to it. It's each equipment you control, right? So even if you're not going Voltron and you just have a bunch of cheap equipment out, that's fine. You'll still deal a bunch of damage. Next up is Aovir Wolf Kissed. Six mana, seven, six, human assassin, warrior, trample, haste. Whenever they deal combat damage to a player, you mill that many cards. You may put a saga card and or a land card from among them onto the battlefield. So it's a six mana, seven, six, trample, haste. And it's a saga commander in Naya. Huh, that seems super fun. What about that in very fun? I like that. It's a different take on sagas where you just get the value. There's no like built-in recursion, but I mean, a seven, six that comes in and like, if you give it double strike, you can get two sagas and two lands. Seems really good. Next up is Evi, Evi Frey. Two mana, two, one. So you partner with Jacob Frey, which I'm sure is in here somewhere. Two, one, pay one, tap, draw a card, then discard a card. And you discard a creature card this way. Target creature can't, you control can't be blocked this turn. When we get to the partner, I'll give a rating on like how I think the partner pair is, but as an individual commander, it seems fine. Next up is Ezio Adetore da Frenzy. Frenzy. Two mana, three, two, human assassin menace. Assassin spells you cast a free running for black, black. And whenever Ezio deals combat damage to a player, you may pay Wooburg if that player has 10 or less life. When you do, that player loses the game. So this seems like the go-to Wooburg assassin commander. All five colors, there are all these assassins in your deck. Sometimes you'll have that Wooburg trigger, but if not, you just kind of have a five color commander in the command zone for assassins. Next up is Ezio, Blade of Vengeance. Five mana, five, five, death touch. Whenever an assassin you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Again, seems like solid. The mirror assassins but like here next up is Ezio brash novice two mana one one whenever it attacks put a plus one plus one counter on it as long as Ezio has two or more counters on it it has first strike and an assassin in addition to other types yeah that's gonna go here i'm not that into this as a card either in the 99 or in the command zone 
I understand why it's here, like flavor wise, it's solid, but as a commander. Next up is Javi the Allfather. Six mana, six, six, God Warrior. Hey, it goes in my Colossal Dreadmod deck. Has Indestructible, as long as there are four more historic cards in your graveyard. And then Sage Project. Whenever it or another legendary creature you control dies, return target legendary creature with less of mana, let they, with lesser mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. That seems really good. I'm gonna put that up to wanna build. Yeah, that seems really good. Next up is ha uh, Haytham Kenway. Four mana, three, three, human knight, protection from assassins. Other knights you control get plus two, plus two, and have protection from assassins. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, exile up to one target creature that player controls until Haytham uh, Kenway leaves the battlefield. So you exile three creatures until this leaves, and all your knights get protection from assassins was really funny. I'll put that like, I don't know if I want to build it, but I'll put it like here. Next is Jacob Fryer, three mana, three, two, human assassin. So it's partnered with Evie, Eve. Whenever one or more assassins you control, deal combat damage to a player. Exile up to one target assassin card or a card with free running from your graveyard. If you do copy it, they cast the copy. So this is even more fun as like an individual commander, but as a partner pair, I would probably put the partner pair in very fun. It's like a Demir copy. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Partner pair in very fun, individual cards, fun and kind of fun. Weird they average out higher, but it's fine. Next is Cassandra Eagle Bear. Three mana, two, two, human assassin warrior with haste. Enter the battlefield, search your graveyard, hand, and library for a card named the Spear of Leonis, Leonidas. Put it into the put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Whenever a creature you control with a legendary equipment attached to it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So it's kind of like not Kemba. What's the cat from <laughs> I just did a video on it. The cat that gets Hammer of Mizan from like into play. So similar to that, not what the spear does, but this commander is just three mana. You get an equipment right onto the battlefield. And there are a lot of legendary equipment in the deck, in 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 the deck, in uh, Magic. So I'm gonna put this in very fun. Maybe want to build, but it's gonna definitely go to the top end of very fun. Next up is Layla Has Hansen, Hassan, Hassan. Four mana, three four human assassin with first strike. Whenever they enter the battlefield, and whenever one or more assassins you control deal combat damage to a player. Return target historic card from your graveyard to your hand. So whenever it or another assassin you control deal combat damage to a player, when it enters, and whenever assassins deal combat damage to a player you control, you return a target historic card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, sorry I had to read that a few times. It is 7.30 in the morning and my coffee's still kicking in and my cat's making a bunch of noise. I'm gonna put them in, I think I wanna put them in fun. This is tough. I'm gonna put them like here in fun, I think, at the tail end. Next up is Leonardo DiCaprio. It's a three mana, three, three human artificer with four, three blue, blue until end of turn. The options you control have base power, toughness, XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Okay. Two and a blue tap, draw a card, then discard a card. If the discarded card was an artifact card, exile it from your graveyard. If you do, create a Thopter token, that's a copy of it, except it's a 0 2 Thopter artifact in addition with flying in addition to his other types. Sorry if you can hear my cat, she's trying to get comfortable. <laughs> but for this commander, interesting. This seems really strong. I'm gonna put this in very fun. I have a feeling like the degenerate things will just be like Portal to Phyrexia, Mycosynth Lattice. Like you can Mycosynth Karn lock, like play this on three, play this, have Karn, pitch Mycosynth Lattice, game's locked. Like, you can do some degenerate things with this. Or you discard equipment, and you have equipment thopters. And that's just funny. Next up is Lydia Free. Fry? It's Fry. It's Fry. Three mana, three, two. Human assassin can be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. At the beginning of your end step, surveil X, where X is the number of tapped assassins you control. So if you want to build a, a, sa a surveil deck, this seems like an actual like, pretty good commander. It You need to find a way of tapping your assassins, but I feel like that shouldn't be too hard. Vehicles is like the first way that comes to mind, but I'm sure there are other ways. So I'm gonna put you in. I'm gonna put you in kind of fun. Next up is Mary Reed and Annie, Annie Bonnie, and Bonnie. Three mana, three three human assassin pirate with haste. Tap, draw a card, then discard a card. And whenever you discard an island, a pirate, or a vehicle, create a tapped treasure token. That's funny. And it's not with just this effect. It's like whenever you do that. I like that's also an island. I don't know why, that's just funny. So if you do a mono blue deck with just some red duels, so you can always discard islands. I like the flavor. I'm gonna put this in the tail end of fun, I think. It's cute. 
I think it's funny in the 99. Next up is, no, I can't pronounce that. It's the Esper one for tone, and I'm not saying the rest. Three mana, three, three human assassin. As long as they haven't dealt damage yet, it has hexproof and can't be blocked. Whenever they deal combat damage to a player, make a one, one black assassin creature token with menace. When you do, return target equipment card from your graveyard to the battlefield, then attach it to that token. Weird. If you give it double strike, it loses hexproof because the first strike damage, but it lets you cheat equipment back into play and then just put it on a 1-1 one, one token. So you need ways of like self-milling, then getting this out, and then that seems fun. I'm going to put that actually at the top, the end of very fun. Next up is Rashan Hidden Magister. Magister, yeah. Four mana, four, four, human assassin. Other creatures you control are assassins in addition to other types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. Face down creatures you control of menace. Whenever a permanent you control is turned face up, you draw a card and lose a life. So, okay, so it's like a more disguised mono black commander that also happens to make all your stuff assassins. Sure. Again, I think this is solid in the 99. I don't know if I want that as a commander. Next up is Senu Keen Eyed Protector. Hey, it's a bird. Two mana, two, one bird scout, flying vigilance. Tap, exile it, you gain two life and scry two. When a legendary creature you control attacks and isn't blocked, if Senu is exiled, put it onto the battlefield attacking. Weird. I like it. I'm going to put it in very fun. It's a bird and has a really cool effect that you... Yeah, I like this card a lot. It's weird. I mean, legendary creature has to not be blocked, but Mono White Legend seems like a fine deck and having a two mana commander that you can keep getting back if people don't want to block your legends seems fine. Next up is Xiao Jun. Three mana, three, three human assassin. As long as it's your turn, they have flying and first strike. And then you could tap two untapped artifacts you control, and they deal one damage to each opponent. The gear per Aether Grid in the command zone that deals damage to each opponent. Whoop. Seems solid. I'm going to put that... Where's the other burn commander? I think it's like here. Yeah, I'll put the burn commanders next to each other. Next up is Sean and Rebecca Agents. These are four mana, four, four human assassin scientists. Vigilance. When they enter the battlefield, search your graveyard, hand, and library for a card named the Animus. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Tap at a colorless when you do mill two cards. I don't remember what the Animus does. I'm going to assume it's good, and I'm going to put them in middle of fun for that reason. Let's actually look up the Animus. So the Animus is a two mana legendary artifact at the beginning of your end step. Exile up to one target legendary creature card from a graveyard and memory counter on it. Tap until your next turn. Target legendary creature you control becomes a copy of target creature in exile with a memory counter on it. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, cool. So it's like a Bant mill deck. Yeah, it earns its place in fun there. Next up is Shay Cormac, two mana one one human knight rogue. Hey, this is so much text on an uncommon. One colorless permanence your opponent's control lose hexproof indestructible protection shroud and ward until end of turn. That seems solid. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, put a bounty counter on that creature. Whenever a creature with a bounty counter on it dies, a two plus one plus one counters on Shay Cormac. That's a lot of words. That is so much text for a uncommon. All that to say is it seems fine. I'll put it in kind of fun. Great utility creature, though. Next up is Surgid Jarl of Ravensthorpe. Three mana, three, three. Jarl of Ravensthorpe. Jays are wise, I think. Human Warrior, Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink. Boast. So pay one colorless, put a lore counter on target Saga you control, or remove one from it. You activate only if a creature attacks this turn and only once each turn. Whenever a lore counter on a... Whenever you put a lore counter on a Saga you control, Put a plus one plus one counter on up to one other target creature. Naya Sagas from this set seems solid. I'm gonna put that in. I'll put that in here next to the other Saga commander. Next up is Socrates, a Theon teacher. Three mana, zero four, human advisor, defender. Has hexproof as long as it's untapped. And you can tap it until end of turn. Target creature gains. If this creature would deal combat damage to a player, prevent that damage. This creature's controller and that player each draw half that many cards rounded down. Okay, so you give your opponent's creatures this. It's a fog that draws both of you cards. And if you have your no hold breacher, because that's banned. You can't have Notion Thief because you're not in Demir. Psychosis Crawler, Alhemrit's Archive, any of the cards that are happy when you draw. That seems actually fun. It's not group huggy. Like you give people cards, but you also save yourself. I'll put that like here at the end of very fun. Next up is Suture Fiery y Yun y Yotun. Five mana, five, five, giant god warrior with trample. Whenever you cast a historic spell, they deal three damage to any target. Okay, <laughs> that seems good. That also seems fun. Maybe I'll build this as my next mono red commander. I have a mono red in a hab deck just like sitting here I haven't played in forever. Maybe I can do mono red legends with this. I didn't want to build mostly because I'm thinking about building it now. And then finally we have the 
Capitonally Triad. Nailed it. <laughs> 10 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. God Artificer. They're colorless. This spell costs one less to cast for each historic card in your graveyard. Exile any number of historic cards from your graveyard with mana value, total mana value 30 or greater. You get an emblem with creatures you control have base power and toughness 9-9. Nine, nine. So this seems actually insane. If you do colorless mill, there are a lot of expensive colorless creatures, including Eldrazi, that don't shuffle themselves back in. Like legendary Eldrazi, right? Because they have to be historic. And big artifact creatures. So you can get this costed down really easily. And then all your, the Thopters and Meb Knights and, you know, everything just becomes a 9-9. Nine, nine, and it's an emblem, so you can't even interact with it. You don't get any benefit from getting more of them because it's base power and toughness. But that seems really fun, and I definitely want to build it. And there you have it. There is my Assassin's Creed fun ranking. A lot of solid commanders in this set. A lot of them seem very fun. Or a lot of them seem fun and very fun. There are definitely a few I want to build. I don't know if I'll do deck techs on all of them. But if you want a certain deck tech, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Also, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notifications when all my tier lists go live. I will be doing my Demir Commander fun tier list hopefully in the next few days. I'm going away in July for a little bit, so content might be a little sparse, but I'll try to get some of those tier lists out. Alrighty, nerds. I'll see you in the next one.